Hi team. So Azure DevOps boards come with some predefined processes to help you manage your work items. So selecting the right process is essential for productivity and making sure that you deliver your project successfully. Now, to better support how your business and your team works, you can actually tweak and customize those processes. You can add additional work items. You can add additional fields and customize the cards of some of those items. You can even change the states of items. For example, user story can be changed to go from in-dev to in-analysis to in-test and so forth to better fit your project needs, right? So in this video, let me show you how to do that. So in Azure DevOps boards, you can effectively start a new project and choose by default from four different processes, right? Now, you can also tweak those processes to meet your needs, right? So if I go now to the organizational settings and I go to process, I can visualize the four default processes here and I can effectively see the work items that are part of those processes. I can see the backlog levels and I can see the current project that I'm using, having using this process, right? You cannot change one of the four default processes that are getting delivered with Azure DevOps boards. However, you can create a custom process based on one of those four default processes. So to create a new custom process basically from one of those basic processes you can go to the three little dots and then you can either create a new project or you create a in new inherited process uh, there are some other features here where you can set this one as default when you start a new project or you can disable a process so if i start and create a new inherited process here i can of course give it a name so if i give agile these apps process and create a process here and then now I can visualize my new process under that default process but I'll be able to select that new process when I start a new project right and from here you can go and now tweak your work item types your backlog levels and you can create project that will follow uh, this new process that you created so back to the work item tabs, you can go here and create new items, but you can also go and edit existing ones. So if I go to the user story, I can effectively tweak the layout here and for example, remove or hide some of the fields. I can effectively maybe create a new field and let's call it design ideas. And then if you make this, you can choose the type of field that you want to create. Let's do multi-line line fields text field it will now appear on your card you can go to states and here use either use the current states provided or you can effectively tweak them right so if for example i can just hide the ones i don't want to use and i can create in analysis for example a new one i want to use which is in progress set it to red and then it will appear here you can add additional rules, so for example, hiding or making some fields required based on other um, condition or prefilling some fields and so forth. So let me show you another example of a process that I tweaked for my project needs. So the Agile Power Platform, what is in there here is that I have created additional work item types, enablers, and I have created teams. So two different item types that I can render now on. So once you have created them using the backlog levels, you can add, for example, the team. I have added this to my portfolio backlogs. And effectively what that does is when you go to the product backlog of your project and effectively you see your epics, your features and your user stories, here you will you will see again epics feature user stories however if you go in there and tweak and switch the teams on then effectively now you can go to your team and i have created a few teams already um, just to show you as an example and effectively now you have your team which are the which are the parent um, portfolio backlog items of the epic and then you have your feature and then you have your user story 
right? Now, the other item is the requirement backlog. So you see here, this is where we store the details of our requirements. And again, what I can do is I can create from a feature, I'll create a user story. When you click on the little plus sign, I won't create it here, but if I were to add here, if I edit and I select work item types on this product le backlog level, if I select also enablers, which is that other work item types, if I go back to my product backlog, refresh my screen, I can effectively from a feature now, I can have a choice to create a user story or an enabler. So this is how this is the, the backlog level are tied to your product backlogs as well. So what I have also done is under work item types, I have tweaked the layout of an existing item, which is the user story. So I have added here the design field URL to documentation. I have added also the sections here with accepted by, accepted date and so forth. So if you go to a user story, whether that's an existing one or if you create a new one, you will now see those fields here. And that's an example with, of an existing user story with those fields are filled in. I've also, if I go back to my process that I tweaked, the states have been updated. So I remove active and resolve and I've added in analysis, in dev, in test and new UAT. Going back to my user story, I can of course see those states here. And then another um, tweak that I did in, in the rules, accepted by date is filled in automatically whenever um a value is set to accepted by and the accepted by field is required when the work item changes to in dev so how does that work you can see that the accepted by is empty but if i switch to in dev this accepted by now is required and i cannot save that user story without filling the accepted by so i'll fill the accepted by and the accepted date is automatically filled in as well now, going back to the all process screen, you can now move project. So let's say you have a team project here, so you can see the projects here, but you can effectively move project to different processes. So the one we created was called Agile, Agile Biz Apps. We can move my project to the tweaked one I created. Um, and also when you start a new project, you will now have the ability to pick some of your custom processes. Voila, I hope that you liked this video. And if that's the case, please give me a thumbs up. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next video I'll be doing about Azure DevOps boards. See you.